Hey, you guys. So, um, I just finished the Melancholy Hari Suzumiya, the movie. Amazing. You guys should just go watch it right now. Don't even click off this video. Just go watch it. It is, it is astoundingly good. I, I mean, I, I was just blown away with the animation, but the plot just, just astounding. Because you, you gotta understand, in the Melancholy of Haru Suzumiya, the first season was all, everybody liked the first season. The second season, there was some regrets, some people didn't like it and stuff, but there, and a lot of people were mad at the people. Uh, who created it <laughs> because they they put us through a bunch of crap in the second season it seemed but having watched this movie it all makes sense why they did it they did it to kind of explain what takes place in the movie I mean I, I, I kind of get what they were going for now should they have done the endless eight probably still not now what what do I mean by this well I'm gonna probably throw in a couple spoilers real quick so if you're worried about that now click off uh, what do I mean by that? Um, I well, there's a certain truth first off that um, the, in most shows, what comes before builds up what comes after. That's just common sense. But in a real sense, the second season uh, had a bunch of bullshit that uh, can be easily explained in the movie. Now, I'll give you a couple examples. Like, okay, so everybody hated the uh, endless eight. It just went on forever. But in a sense, that explains, it, it humanizes Yuki's reaction in the movie. Because it takes what frustration she felt throughout a se two seasons of putting through, well, more than two seasons if we're going to, you know, follow the actual storyline, of just bullshit, you know, just waiting, just crap building up, that it, it just humanizes her reaction. The other thing that I think... Uh, is inc is important is that it highlights the early episode uh, the one where they go draw that thing on the uh, wall or on the ground or whatever you know what I'm talking about if you haven't seen the second season you won't fucking know what I'm talking about but uh, they do that in the second season and uh, y y y you watch it and it doesn't seem that important uh, you know it's probably got some deeper meaning, but it just seems like a bullshit kind of episode, really. I mean, like, I was, I, I, I was like, what the fuck? What's this episode about? But having watched the movie, you understand that the uh, importance of that event has more importance, I guess. You, you kind of get a little bit of a glimpse into why it's important. Um, I think also the fact that I think this is where they wanted to take the series originally. I think they wanted to jump the sign period, like the sign and um, the other couple books, if I understand right. They, this was a major consideration. Uh, and uh, somebody told me, I don't know if this is true, mind you, but uh, the reason why they start this movie with the original intros because of that. It's because they wanted to go down this path instead of going through all that bullshit with the sign and uh the sign of horror excuse me if you don't know what i'm talking about is a book and that's why i keep referencing it and uh all the other uh stuff that they ended up doing in the second season they just wanted to jump that and go to this movie and i will say that makes a lot more sense in a sense uh I, now i think the uh primary uh event in this movie, the mo one of the most important things in this movie is the uh, first off, uh, it, well, it is the fact that we find out Yuki got God power. I mean, that, that it's just mind blow because it changes the whole dynamics of the series. Because right before this movie, before this movie, it just how three hours ago before this movie, uh, that there was. Only one god in the the universe of Haruhi, seemingly, right? You know, there was only one person who could really alter reality significantly. Could, you know, fuck up everybody's day. But now, we find out, no, fuck Yuki got that power. I mean, it's just, it's just what the fuck's going on? I mean, it's just, it's a mind fuck. Because that totally, it, now you got, what do you do? Well, you know, now you got two basic gods, one of them's 
being sedated, it seems like, with, you know, shots and crap. And the other one, you know, you're treated all special and crap. I, you, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's just kind of a, it changes the whole dynamics of the series. The other thing is that it, if this follows how horror we series usually go, I haven't read the books, mind you, but I should, um, it would follow that probably, you know, Muki or whatever, can never pronounce her name, probably has that same, you know, some level of godlike powers too. I mean, to the point where she can alter reality and stuff. Maybe she got to hold hands or crap. I don't know. But, it, <laughs> boy, that sounds random. But in the movie, there's a part where they hold hands. I guess I should. And they, they travel through time. You remember if you've seen the movie. But, um... Yeah, uh, it probably means that it, this this power that, you know, Haruhi's got is probably not that significant overall. The other thing that we find out that uh, is significant, uh, to a certain extent, not as much, is uh, the that um, a certain other man uh, has feelings for Haruhi, which you can all, you can kind of see coming, um, but I think that that's going to become more important in the next season. And I think that this also sent the groundwork for uh, season three, um, which I, 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 I got to believe they're going to do. Maybe they'll dig around like they did with season two. I mean, if they hadn't dicked around, around about season two, and if they hadn't spent so much fucking time on season The Endless Eight, I think that they their fan there would be no question about it. But they had to dick around, so now there's actual questions about them getting season three, which pisses me off. Plus, they'll probably wait like another eight years or something, and it's just, it's just so annoying. Um, now, the uh, voice actors, of course, do astounding. The animation is beautiful. Um, and I guess I should just get all the technicals out of the way. I think that um, it just was a beautiful movie. I, I'm just, I, I really believe that. I mean, uh, as far as, you know, I mean, it's a, it's an anime. So, you know, I mean, it's not like, uh, there's a cameraman standing on a cliff, you know, hanging over, taking a shot. Nah, this is somebody, you know, drawing and printing and shit. You know what I mean? So it, there's, but it's, it's a beautiful animated movie. Um, I, th I guess I should mention Ryoko or if that's how they spell her name. Kind of. I'd, I'm going to call it Ryoko. I, that, that's how I read it. Anyway, um, she her return is interesting because uh, she was recreated by Yuki. Now, why did Yuki recreate Ryoko? Well, probably plot device. That's probably why it is, truly. But um, it, it, it brings up a certain question about her intelligence in a sense. You know, she's this, she's this super intelligent robot woman and she just kind of fucked up there, you know? Or did she fuck up? Maybe it was part of some kind of fucked up plan, you know? I think the other thing that we uh, see is that these institutions um, don't play as much of a role as you think. Uh, for example, you'd think that these institutions would have seen this coming and would have shot that robot, you know what I'm saying? They would have shot you, but they didn't. Um, part of this, of course, is to add to the plot as well, but I think it also, uh, shows the distance of the institutions, and it also examines, uh, it also explains to a certain extent, um, the overall distrust that Keon has for them. Uh, it kind of brings that to the forefront. Um, what else should I mention? I, I'm not going to just go through this episode or this movie because at this point it's nine minutes in, but that's probably what I was going to do. Um, I will mention that I think that the beginning where he's looking for her is like, I mean, it's just like, it, you know what it reminds me of? You know what? I, I, should, I guess I should explain in case somebody's watching this. There's a point where Keon's looking for Haruhi and nobody knows what the fuck he's talking about. It's like, do you know Harvey? No. Do you know Harvey? No. Do you know Harvey? No. What's going on? I mean, it's kind of like that. But, um, that scene reminds me of, uh, uh, the, the, the one famous Nietzsche quote where there's some guy looking for God in a village and he's going around and nobody knows where God is. In a sense, it was very symbolic 
it was almost it, it was almost like a Nietzsche throwback. Now, I, of course, I, that's a that's that's total bullshit, but that's what it reminded me of. Um, it just was it just was amazing. I don't know. I think that um, the series is just incredible. Um, yeah, the second season wasn't all that it was supposed to be, but I. I don't know. The movie was so good. I mean, I just, I don't know. I, anyway, you should definitely check it out. I give it a 4.9 out of 5. Um, I it just, it's just so amazing. I mean, like, I'm, I'm going to watch it again, probably, um, after I got to do other things. That's why I got the hat. I'm doing this weird game. Also, I have bad hair. But <laughs> that's it. Subscribe, comment, rate.